<laughs> he did not get it. But were you concerned about what the special counsel said about the president's memory? Sure, we're all concerned. Everyone's concerned. I said, if you're picking on, on memory, you know, uh, what Joe Biden said is very concerning. I understand, and, and, and people are concerned. And what Donald Trump has said, that he thought Nikki Haley was, uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi was very concerning, you know. And when you get a little older, you get, uh, you know, you're not as quick as you were. <laughs> we all get to that position. Anyway, the bottom line is if we're picking on memory, we have a problem. If you're picking on character, I think it's pretty clear. But, I mean, do you think that he can be president still, be the candidate for this party with given the concerns yeah, raised? I, I think that basically that people will make that decision. You know, whatever your concerns may be, you're going to be able to uh, express them in November election. Well, what do you think? What, what do you think? Saying, isn't that part of what I'm some see Democrats are I'm saying privately, though? I mean, I mean, that they think that he has lost a step. They were saying I mean, this only thing, even before this. The only thing I can tell you is I, I can only go from my experience. I've met with both of them before, okay, when yeah. Trump was president when, and President Biden now. I've never had that concern at all when I talked to either one of them. As, as, uh, as I've spoken to President Biden here not that long ago, very good conversation, uh, very to the point and, and very explicit on what we were trying to get accomplished and the differences he and I might have had on certain things. We talked about that, and it was a very good conversation. So I can only judge that. What comes across to the public is something that yeah, I can't. I mean, voters are concerned about his age. I understand that. I don't have that con concern because I've had conversations that are very, very, I think, very productive. But doesn't that speak to the exact issue that, you know, you said you've had. Communication. You, but you've had good conversations, yeah. lucid conversations yes. with him, but the general public doesn't perceive that because they don't get to have those conversations. Well, uh, you're asking me a question. I can only tell you my experience. But, but is that a problem? If I didn't you? have that experience, the perception, I can understand the perception. But, but they should be perceived. By both of them, for and, and really, you know, what what worries me more as much as of anything is that when former President Trump has said that uh, uh, our NATO allies, if they're not at a certain percentage of paying into it, rather than sitting down working with them and moving them, and most of them have moved to a direction of paying much more in. What alarms you about Trump's comment? That, that's that's. I mean, we are the superpower of the world because not just because of the superpower that we have as far as the military might, economic might, and everything else that the United States stands for, but we have allies around the world that will fight with us, that believe in us and values. And I think it's the most detrimental, harmful thing that could have been said, what he's saying, to divide this country up and basically make us a nationalist. Just That's all about us. It's not about us. It's about the world order. We have to protect our country. The border has to be protected. I've never been more deflated in what I'm seeing happening right now in Washington. And my colleagues, who I have an awful lot of respect and admiration for, and they're my friends, to tell me one thing on one day of why it needs to be done, me a couple months ago saying we're not going to do anything on any aid whatsoever, and I know desperately that Ukraine needs our help. Won't even move in that direction until we do border security, which I agree with my Republican colleagues. Border security to me is the most dangerous thing we face as Americans. So we've talked about that. We start moving. They picked the one person who I believe is the most uh, conservative, honorable person in, in, the, in the whole Senate, as, as one of them is Jim, James Langford. And to put him in a position to where he was going to negotiate to make sure that it was holding the line, I'm thinking, well, if James can come to an agreement, it's going to be a bill that takes care. We talked so many times, he and I have, about catch and release, asylum, uh, the whole thing as far as adjudication. Don't take any more in than what you can adjudicate. No one gets released into it. All the things we talked about, he got in. And all of a sudden, they blew it up because of a person, Donald Trump, saying that it's not good for our country uh, because it's not good for his election, and it'd be better for him if it didn't get, you know. The only thing I would tell you all is I think that President Biden would be, would be grateful for our country if he would say, listen, if I made a mistake, and I did make a mistake on the border because I disagree with his border policy from day one, I made it trying to be human, uh, in a humanistic way, trying to help people around the world who are having problems, if that's his reason for doing what he did. Uh, now, with that being said, I tried, and it was taken advantage of, and it was overrun. We can't handle it. I'm shutting it down. Mm -hmm. I think people would accept that better than not saying anything. How do the remarks by the former president affect this debate here? Obviously, this bill is going to pass, but the change in position by some Republican senators and also influence what might happen in the House. Well, the changing of positions right now is all political. That's what – something is dangerous. I've always said this. I knew we had problems of, of, of uh, legislating during normal – situations because it's become so toxic and uh, and politics has been weaponized it's been weaponized to the point to where people 
you know, what side are you on? There's only one side, the American side. There's, the Democrat Republican side should be bringing different ideas of how to fix the same problem. It's not what's happening. So what you're doing right now, everyone's taking position in their side and defending that side, right, wrong, or indifferent. It's not who we are. And I always said we could basically come to agreement on a crisis and move forward. We've got a crisis, and I saw it break down. So I've been more discouraged. What I saw break down in the Senate with a lot of good people making votes that I knew they didn't believe, strictly because of political fear or the political persuasion or whatever it might be. So I don't know how anyone would want to serve here if you have to be subservient to somebody other than the people that elect you. Well, you spoke to Biden. When did That's you speak to him? When did you speak to Biden? You said you spoke to him? Yeah, I did. When was that? 